Good day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In today's video we're going to talk about copper. So we'll talk about copper additives, copper wear metals, as well as copper contaminants. <coughs> Alright, so um, there aren't that many different copper additives that you might find in your oil, but on the off chance that you do, um, there are some antioxidants, uh, specifically copper salt antioxidants. They're usually present in sort of between 100 and 200 parts per million. So above 200 parts per million, um, these copper antioxidants can start to interfere with the anti-wear additives. So you don't really want anything above 200. And anything below, they don't tend to be all that effective. So um, this might seem a little bit counterintuitive because copper corrosion products tend to be the catalysts that accelerate the rate of oxidation. But it seems like oil-soluble copper salts are antioxidants. So that's kind of the difference. You might find these in the form of, um, you know, copper dithiocarbamates, um, naphthenates, oleates, stearates, um, carboxylates, or thiocyanates. So there are a few different kind of, um, if you like, antioxidant species. Um, generally, with these copper salts, they're, you know, formed by an acid-base reaction, just like many of the others. All right, then we get to move on to uh, friction modifiers. And this one might look a little bit familiar, but uh, copper DDP is very analogous to um, zinc, so uh, ZDDP, right? And the way that it kind of works is that if you imagine you have a, a, a surface, right, and you have a, a, a copper DDP additive, what it tends to do is kind of um, interact with the, the surface, and it makes... Um, Effectively, what happens is that the copper selectively transfers to the surface and you get the formation of these really thin, easy to shear metal films. And so as they slide past each other, um, that gives you, um, you know, uh, good lubricity, but it also helps uh, carry the load. So it acts in a very similar way to molybdenum uh, disulfide. All right, so that's copper additives. Then we come on to copper wear metals. Um, and the most common uh, place where you'll probably get actual um, elemental wear is from from bearings right so um, you'll probably be familiar with kind of the concept of a tri-metal bearing where they have different layers and most of the time there are variations on this but you'll have kind of a, a lead tin overlay a nickel barrier that sits underneath it and then a copper lead lining with a steel backing and so as you work your way through those layers you'll start to see them show up in the oil analysis results so um, you know, that copper lead lining, often it's kind of an alloy of copper. So if you know what kind of alloy it is, um, by, by comparing the ratio of copper to the alloying metal in your used oil analysis results, you might be able to determine where that wear is coming from. Um, now these kind of bearings, you'll see them in kind of like big and small end bearings on engines. You might see them on the turbos as well. So there's a variety of different places that copper can come from. The other really common place that we see them is um, in oil coolers. Um, they're such a, a common material to build oil, oil coolers from because they're very thermally conductive and that's the exact kind of material that we want um, when we're building a cooling system. Right? So you'll be familiar with all of these you know, copper tubes that helps increase the surface area right? um, and the exposure of the oil to the, to the, the cooling medium. And the way that this um, we've talked about this before, but the way that this kind of wear metal shows up in your used oil analysis results is a little bit different. So effectively what's happening is it's a chemical interaction between the, the interface of the copper metal and the lubricant. And what's happening, if I can represent sort of copper atoms on the left and the lubricant additives on the right, is that it is this slow migration of copper um, into the lubricant. Um, and this kind of happens, it could be over a period of weeks or months. And you'll get the, if you like, deposition of more and more copper into the oil. One thing you'll notice about this is the, the rate of copper deposition slows down as um, these metal passivators interact with the surface. So they effectively bind to the metal surface, right, and, and stop the interaction of the copper metal with the lubricant. So you'll see that start to tail off. The other way that you might be able to recognize the difference between, um, you know, uh, this kind of passivation process versus wear is that it's it's often much higher so passivation will you know you might see values of 200 300 400 parts per million whereas with copper wear you know anything be above kind of 50 to 100 would be very very unusual 
So one thing to w- watch out for, I should have mentioned that, is that um, if you are seeing sort of that two, three, four hundred parts per million as a result of passivation, that's not a concern. However, it can often mask the effects of bearing wear. So you, you, you won't see wear on your bearings. All right, um, let's talk about um, coolants. Um, copper can be a source of, uh, um, can indicate that you have a coolant leak somewhere. Typically, you'll see um, copper along with, you know, boron, sodium, potassium, moly, you know, all the other regular ingredients of, uh, of coolant. Uh, anti seize compounds are also a really common kind of source of copper. Um, now, there are a few kind of variations on this, but often you'll see copper along with maybe aluminium and, and nickel. Finally, we've got copper dirt. Um, so, you know, if you're at a mine site, particularly a copper mine, um, and, and the surrounding dirt is rich in copper, that could be a, a source of contamination as well. So it's just another thing to, to look for, out for. All right, um, that's been very quick, but I hope that this can help you uh, troubleshoot a little bit and identify where the copper in your oil analysis results might be coming from. As usual, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.